Hi, I'm Paul Higgins and this is Paul Higgins Photography. What I'm going to talk about today is a recent acquisition of mine. It's this guy. Not The focusing's not that great, so I'm just going to hold it in front of my face. It's the Sony a7R 3 which is a great little camera, and we'll talk about it after this. Hi, Paul Higgins from Paul Higgins Photography here. And I wanted to talk today about this little camera that I just recently acquired. It's a used copy of a Sony a7R 3 It's got about 15,000 shutter activations on it. So hopefully good for a little while. Uh, I bought it from MPB, which is uh, one of my, really my go-to place for getting secondhand gear. And I buy a lot of secondhand gear. Um, I don't get paid by them or anything, but just a quick word about what uh, where I acquired it from. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go through a run through of the camera, you know, show you all the little bits and pieces on it, what it does, what they do. And then I'm going to show some pictures and talk about what my pros and cons of the camera are. So let's get through, let's get on with the overview. Hi, so this is my overview of the a7R 3 So we're going to start at the back. And here at the back, hopefully you can see, uh, I'm hoping everything is in focus, the, the back of the camera uh, has a, a couple of function buttons. There's a C3 function button and the, um, the little trash bin icon there can also be programmed. There's a preview button. There's a rotating dial which you can program here which is nice. There's also you can do you can program up down left and right uh, to do functions which I do which I have. I actually have them set pretty much as they are programmed out of the box which is ISO, dis changing the display options. This is a uh, self timer and, um, sh and shoot mode. And then down, I actually have that set to be able to adjust the steady shot when I have manual lenses to change the focal length. There's also a record button here, which I've disabled because I use the AF on for back button focusing. And I also, f I found that I was hitting this guy a lot. So I, you can disable this. There's a menu to get into all the options. There's also an exposure lock button, which is nice. And uh, the viewfinder is quite nice too. And that's about it for the back of the camera. Oh, uh, actually I missed this. So the uh, screen does uh, flip, uh, sorry, pop out and tilt, but it doesn't flip. It doesn't, it only goes that the way I just showed you. Moving to the top of the camera. So here on top of the camera, we're a little bit in the shade here, but anyway, there's a, a focal plane indicator there, a couple of microphone stroke speakery kind of things there. That's a technical term. Flash port, hot shoe flash port uh, with the customized uh, Sony flash port. There is a control dial here, which is nice. Uh, you change the uh, the exposure, uh, the, sorry, the shooting mode by pressing in the little button, otherwise it's locked. There's manual shutter priority, aperture priority, other bits and pieces on here, and also three presets that you can program in. Though you just, it's got a nice little click, so that's nice. A couple more function buttons, the on off switch and the shutter release. Here, I like, I, I do like this exposure compensation button. Uh, that's very nice to just have that. Sometimes it's difficult to understand why you might need these other control wheels if you have an exposure plus or minus. So that's an interesting one. One thing about the exposure compensation though is it only goes to three, it won't move any further. And you can actually, I think, go to about five with the camera on exposure compensation. So if you need to go more than three, you'd have to either program a different button or do some uh, a different wheel or do something else. So that's the top of the camera. If we move around to the front of the camera, front of the camera, not really a lot to say about the front of the camera really, other than there's a infrared port here for if you have an infrared uh, uh, controller of some description. There's a control wheel at the front here and there's the focus assist stroke self timer button as well here at the, um, at the, at the front. No function buttons on the front. This is the release for the, for the lenses. Moving over to this side over here. On this side, if I open all, I'll open all these up 
all at once so you can see what's going on. Actually, I'll open those up to start with. Hopefully those are in focus. There's a coax flash. There's a speaker in, sorry, a microphone in, Jeez. microphone in. There's headphones and there's an, uh, micro, a mini HDMI port. So that, and these have got nice little clicks to them. And down here, interestingly enough, there are two USB ports. There's a, a USB C and a micro USB, which is interesting. And both of them charge. So you can charge and download and tether and all that kind of good stuff too. So that's that's quite a nice couple of options. And they're quite flexible about what they will what you can charge what you can use to charge as well, which I'm very impressed at. Uh, other cameras I've had, they're a bit fussy about what you can use to charge them, but I've used just uh, regular power blocks to charge them, nothing nothing too fancy or complicated. Moving over to the other side of the camera here, there's an NF I wanted to say NFT, but it's a, there's a touchless, whatever that's called over there, I forget. It, it, it also has Wi-Fi. It's got a nice little button to open the card slot access port here, which is nice. So that's very nice. So in here, I don't know if you can see too well, but there are two slots, which is nice. So there's a, this is a UHS-2 slot and this is a UHS-1 slot. So for some reason, Sony has slot one at the bottom and slot two at the top. Most cameras seem to have slot one at the top. But anyway, Sony has slot one at the bottom. I'm not really sure why they only have UHS-2 on one, but they do. The other thing that I really like about this uh, access port is, look how smoothly this just locks. Isn't that, isn't that nice? <laughs> well, I like it. <laughs> All right, so moving to the bottom, not really a whole lot to see here. There's just the back battery in here. Uh, this is one of these new longer life, uh, longer duration batteries, which is great, works very well. And a tripod mount. So that's the overview of the Sony a7R 3 I'm actually doing reviews or overviews on both of these cameras, the a7R 3 and the a7C. So I thought it might be good to just show you what they look like next to each other so you can do it like a side by side thing on them so there's the uh this is kind of like the front and uh, here's the here's the bottom so you can see that the grip on the a7r3 is a little larger than the one on the a7c so those uh, that's the bottom of them both have both take the same batteries which is nice you can also see that the a7r3 has a front control bar which the a7c does not have Going to the top, they are very quite, very quite similar, or quite similar. There's, uh, yeah, you can see they've both got the exposure compensation dials on them and uh, the on off switches and the flash, and that's about it, really. Same programming modes and everything like that on the top. Uh, we move around to the back of the cameras, which is probably where there's the most difference, really, if you look here. So you can see that on the, uh, the A7. C has the viewfinder off to the left, which is not good for us left eye shooters. <laughs> but anyway, that's just uh, that's just how that is. Uh, there's a control dial on the back of the A7C, uh, the joystick on the A7R3, and uh, pretty much everything the same. Uh, you know, some things are different. So there aren't as many function keys clearly on the A7C. That's not what it's intended for. And also, you can see that the, there's no real cap eye cap on the viewfinder. Uh, the only thing, the other thing that's different is this. So the, as I mentioned in the videos of these cameras, so this one just pops out, but the A7C does actually have a tilty flippy screen, which is, which is nice. Looking at the bottom, they're pretty much, the, you know, pretty much the bottoms are the same. I think I might've showed those the sides. So the sides are quite different. So this side on the A7C has both the SD card, which is this this guy here, and also the ports, and then on the A7 R3, there are just the regular ports, which I explained in the video, and on the right hand side, uh, nothing at all on the A7C, uh, but just the just the contact points for the non-touch, and that's it. So there you go, quick view of the two cameras side by side.
Okay, so this is the summary, uh, pros and cons, etc., etc., for the A7R3. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's go. You know, I just showed you the around the camera. So I'm going to do this bit, and there'll probably be some images that I show as I go through this uh, set of the this part of the review. So pros and cons, so pros. So one of the huge pros about the A7R 3 at the moment is it's a fantastic value. I think mine was about 1400 bucks, 14, 1500 bucks. You know, this camera initially retailed, I think for like about three grand. It's got a huge sensor, 40 odd megapixel, 45 is it? Something like that. Megapixel sensor, backside illuminated. It's It's got a great sensor. It's it's a great camera and it's a great value at the moment so i would uh, and there's a lot of choice of them too so i got mine from mpb i think they probably had like 20 of these uh, a7 r3s so so a lot of choice and a very reasonable price so i, I you know i i think it's a, you can't go wrong really to be honest with it it's a, it's a great value uh next one is oh my god it's high resolution so I took a, a couple of pictures when I was evaluating some Tamron lenses, and oh my goodness, the the quality, the sharpness, the you know just the overall picture quality is just fantastic with this camera. It's unbelievable. I know that there are some cameras that I've got higher megapixel counts, but this is fantastic. It's wonderful. Just 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 you don't really need to worry about cropping. Be, uh, sorry about composition, really, because you can crop in because. It's just insane how much resolution there is for you to be able to get hold of your your um, your what you want in a in, in a picture. Um, so uh, if you've been watching my A7C video before this one or after this one, I also have an A7C and the A7C I can interchange between these two cameras really easily. The menus are the same. It's a really good little package between the two to be able to just flip from one to to the other very easily everything's the same a lot of the dials and buttons and everything are the same on the two cameras so there's a you know and i've got them set up so that the quick menu uh is the same on the both of them and on my my menu is the same and everything so it's very easy to flip between the two so that's great i love it it's uh it's weather sealed so that's great as well so you can take it out in all kinds of weathers provided you've got the right sort of lenses on it which is great it's uh, got the two card slots, which again is is fantastic. It's uh, it, it, it's very handy to have those two card slots just in case of redundancy. So that's really nice. Uh, what else have we got here? I mentioned this in the A7C um, video as well, but you you can adapt old legacy glass, so you can get uh, adapters for Alpha uh, the uh, Sony. E mount adapters for different uh, types of lenses. I have a lot of Nikon old Nikon lenses. They're not that great. They're not mega sharp or anything, but they just give a different feel. So I've got a Nikon F mount. I've got an M42 mount, and I've also got a M. I think it's an M39, but a rangefinder uh, mount adapter too. The some of them, some of the cheaper ones, like the the cheaper adapters that I've got. You have to be a little bit careful because they may well need some adjustment of uh, calibration because some of them don't focus to infinity out of the bat. So you may have to do some work there. There's quite a lot of videos online about how you how you can adjust these adapters. So so that's great. And like I said, it, it gives you a lot of flexibility about lots of really good legacy glass, which is nice. What else have we got here? Um, yeah, so same menu system as the A7C. So like uh, I think I mentioned that earlier, I can swap between the A7C that I have and the A7R3 very seamlessly. So I do really like that as well. Um, it's a, it's not a, it's not that heavy a camera as well. I didn't put that in here, but it, it, it really, when I was looking at it, it's a little bit less heavy than I think than at least one of my two big cameras, professional cameras that I had. When I was doing micro four thirds, so it's not a heavy camera. It's it, it gets heavy if you start putting fast glass on it because the fast glass is um, is you know it's 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 heavy. Fast glass, full frame fast glass is heavy, so that's a uh, that can be a problem. 
Um, what else have we got here? Same menus as A7R3. Oh, the other thing as well is, and I didn't mention this on the A7C, but there's a ton of choice of lenses for these cameras. So I, I, I may have mentioned on the A on the A7C there are some cheaper so there are some cheaper stroke lighter lens options like the the Sony kit lens the the seven, 28, 28 to seventy and the twenty eight to sixty which comes with the A7C both of those are nice options for lighter weight if you if you want just not carry a really heavy lens around with you but there are a lot of lens options for the a the a7 series cameras uh yeah and and also quite a lot of third party lenses as well so there's some good tamrons there's good sigmas there's sony's there's third party chinese lenses there's all kinds of lenses so there's a lot of options for a full for a full frame camera probably the largest selection of lenses that any of the full frame uh cameras have so that's that's a really a really good pro cons well it's a little older so if you're into the latest technology and and sony has made some improvements on their autofocus but the autofocus uh tracking and everything on the a7r3 is still very very good so but it's you know it is it is a little bit of an older camera uh one thing that, that i i still think is weird is that the uh, SD cards are different speeds. Why is that? That why is one uh, UHS two and one's UHS? It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So that's a, a con that I, um, I <laughs> uh, it just it's just confusing. I don't know why. Uh, it doesn't have a flippy screen. That can be important. Uh, you know, you couldn't uh, vlog with this camera very easily because there's no flippy screen. And the final disadvantage, which really I don't really I don't really care. Uh, about is the older menu system the older menu system i don't think it's that bad coming from nikon it's pretty straightforward actually so so i would i would say you know hey don't worry about the the menu system and if you get an a7c the menu system on the a7c and the a7r3 is pretty much the same so it, 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 that really is is great you can just use the same settings on each one and um, it's just great. So all in all, you know, the A7R three, I think it's a fantastic camera. If you're just getting into doing professional work, it's a good little starting camera because it's low price. If you're a sort of part-timey kind of professional photographer like I am, it's also great because it gets you into the full frame and it, full frame format. And it also, you know, the, the cost of the cameras is pretty, is pretty, reasonable in fact they're cheap so it, it's good for all kinds of photography it's nice to take uh, take out with you it's a, you can almost take it around with you it's pretty light as i mentioned i think it's lighter than the lumix g9 that i had and pretty much the same i want to say it's the same ish kind of weight as the em1 mark ii olympus em1 mark ii that i had it's only when you put the lenses on that they get heavy so if you can find lighter lenses like i mentioned the sony 28 to 60 is very light and not bad so that's great but if you put an f2.8 28 or 24 to 70s on it it is it is heavy not it not overly heavy uh but you yeah, it is heavy it is heavy with uh, the faster glass so all in all, i think it's a fantastic camera a little older maybe um and it looks you know if you look on mpb there are tons of them around um there are lots of them available second hand I got one with the original box, original manuals and everything for like fourteen fifty, I think it was, dollars. So pretty cheap. So definitely worth buying. Hope you enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. I'm Paul Higgins and this is Paul Higgins Photography. See you next time. Bye.